Mate, how I wanted to kick off this episode with something a little bit different. Okay. All right. Now, there's a bit of this sort of stuff going on with some different podcasts like the likes of We Mean Well, who's a all over TikTok feeds and in the in the, in the charts and in your hearts. And okay. The likes, the likes of like We Got the Chocolates as well. Okay. As you, as you know, and as the drifters probably know, whilst I respect... Um, you know, other people doing podcasts and, you know, good luck to them and they're doing much better than we probably are, obviously. I just don't really follow podcasts, man. I'm not a podcast guy. I'm a podcast guy. I know you're a podcast guy, which is helpful. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there's a little bit of like red light, green light, red flag, green flag. But let's go with overrated, underrated. All yeah. Right? So... Am I just giving you overrated or underrated as no, a... No, no, I'm giving you a, a something and then you're... Okay. All right. Overrated, underrated. Yeah. Beef brisket. Overrated. I had lunch, right, with the good people at my workplace on Monday. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to put my nose out because it was a free lunch. Oh, yeah. You can't complain when it's free. I can't. But this was some of like that I find even when I've had good beef brisket, I put beef brisket and pulled pork in this same category. Mm. It's just the juice is not worth the squeeze at all. It was it's just tasteless meat to me. Agreed. Yeah. Um, I find most of the time it is tasteless and dry. I've had some really good pulled pork. It was like lovely spices and really salty and. Really well done, um, juicy, but yeah, I'm not a, yeah, slow cooked meats and I, mm. do you know what I am? I'm a big cured meats guy. I'm a big, you know, salami, pepperoni, chorizo, um, beef jerky type operator because of the strong flavours that you're getting from the, those sort of things. Like, that's the sort of guy I am. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and... Um I'm 100% in the same sort of boat. But um, yeah, pulled pork, beef brisket, not for me. Fair enough. Um, was there any more to come? Overrated or underrated? No. Just the one? You know what? I thought right. you were going to rattle through like like chips, underrated, bedtime, underrated, <laughs> horse racing, underrated, Well, rugby league, underrated. We can do that for the next few weeks. We can bring a couple each. Okay. All right, let's do that. Actually, state of origin selections. Overrated, Mm. underrated. Hard to to define that as an underrated or overrated thing because I agree with some of them and disagree with others. Mm -hmm. Um, Look, would I have expected from Queensland's perspective, Kalen Ponga, Dane Gagai, uh, Kirk Catewell and the likes of being in the side, yeah, like I would have expected that. Glory holes pinged a calf though. Oh, has he? Well, there yeah. you go. Um, <laughs> um, Kalen and Dane were a bit of a surprise, but also, yeah, I get it. I, I do understand it. And at the same time, I'm the sort of Queensland supporter who's you know a better Queensland supporter than all you other people listening out there, and I just support my team from the outset. I'm just like, yep, yeah, whoever's in the team, They'll get the JD. Go, boys. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, your yeah. thoughts? Um, good. It's a good side, mate. Good side. Um, I was more interested with the uh, New South Wales selections. Um, Tavita Pengai Jr., for one. Um, look, good football. Better than us put together, I would have thought. But yeah. um, origin player? Oof. Guess you just have to wait and see. Damien Cook? Jeez, it's a big omission, isn't it? Yeah. But you've got to get Nico in the t- in the side, don't you? Yeah, I don't know if not for United, I don't think. Yeah, and Appy's Appy's good, but I don't think he's any. He's not a Damien Cook. Uh, I'd prefer Appy personally. Yeah, yeah or you're a Queensland just, supporter though. It's just rugby league, isn't it? Isn't it? Anyway, we head to Eagle Farm this weekend, Drifters, because the Queensland Derby. And the what was the other one? The Kingsford Smith are uh, here, which Two is group ones. 
it's it's fantastic stuff. And our premier track, which can I say has really turned a corner in the last uh, yeah. year or two. Mm-hmm. It has. It was much maligned at one stage. <laughs> Very much so. Yeah. So much maligned that they couldn't even race there, mate. No, no. I remember that. Uh, it was it was fine all week, but it was racing like a heavy eight. Mm. They just absolutely butchered it. But look at it now. Let's kick off with the Queensland Derby. Race seven, 2,400 metres for the three-year-olds. Group one contest. Kovalika is the dollar seventy favourite with the week back up from the Doombin Cup. Does he go out there and just put his hooves to the sword here? Uh, I think he does, but I don't think he's dollar seventy does. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, yeah, I think he wins the race. But I don't think he's a dollar seventy worthy. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Like he he's drawing well. Um he um Ran super in the Duma Cup last week, but but he's there's got to be a query because of that uh, slight hiccup in his prep. Even though he appeared to run really well last prep, uh, last start, but he's on the quick backup. Also, looks to be a race devoid of pace. Whereas the Duma Cup, they went pretty quick, and he saved every inch up on the rails. So, look, I I think he wins, and he's the deserved favourite. But a dollar seventy is very short with Ned's. Um, my thing is though, we've been crying out for. Whilst the three-year-olds have dominated the sprints at sort of open weight for age and open handicaps, we've been screaming out for a three-year-old to come through and be like a genuine middle distance, staying distance um, type who's going to go on with it mm. once they hit the weight for age ranks. And and I think Kobalik is that guy. Like we, we saw that last week in the Doom and Cup. Yeah, the Doom and Cup's not our strongest 2,000-meter race, but he was racing against uh, your Huetas, uh, your Numerians, your Zyrex, your Duaces, Duaces. These are group one, group two type horses. So clearly he's got some ability. Um, I just I just think he's better than all these other staying types. Mm-hmm. So I guess oh, that does justify the quote. Ah. <laughs> what, what about you, mate? Uh, I think so. Um, I was looking through, right? And the next three that are probably... Um, you know, I've marked like the biggest threats are like your promises kept, your Aberfeldy boy, your the vows. Mm. Um, and oh, they just don't get me hot and bothered at all, um, especially with Aberfeldy boy and promises kept who, you know, they're coming from the SA derby and how many more runs do they actually have left? Um, the one that I think is... The up and comer, and was at an enormous price uh, before the field was finalised. It was fifty one dollars. Jesus, with Neds uh, in futures markets, it's come into twenty one dollars. That's number fourteen fame. So, has some of the best country provincial Victorian form you'd ever hope to see. <laughs> <laughs> Two starts back at Kyneton uh, at the eighteen hundred and fifty meters. One of my favourite distances. Um, one by six. Did Where it, we? Did it on on speed. First race of the day was the sixth fastest last 200 of the day. And the, basically, there was five other races that were shorter distances. Sheesh. So, it is actually absolutely smashed the clock. Next start, Moe steps up <clears throat> to the 2,050 metres. Actually jumps well, but then just gets shuffled back. It was, they were coming for him. Oh, it was... <laughs> and they, you know... The other jocks were basically going like, I'm going to get this thing beaten because it got shuffled right back. It was basically second last and it was a searching run out wide. The jock basically had nowhere else to go and it's still one by three and a half. <laughs> like, Easy. Huge, huge, huge engine on this thing. Now, it's gone from a 64 rated race in Maui to a group one <laughs> over the 2,400 metres. But this thing could be like its last good. two runs when it stepped up to dis- to this distance or stepped up in distance, it's doing the right things. The big query for mine is it's been racing on those Victorian soft tracks. Mm. So it's going to be on this rock hard Eagle Farm track, which I think um, Kovalika has proven that he loves it. He yeah. loves it rock hard. I think it's two from two at the track. And he's four from four on good ground. 
if there is a blowout, this is the horse. Yep. So, but I'm finding it very difficult to not go the league at all. 100%. He just profiles so well for the race. Uh, J-Mac goes on as well. So, um, yeah, I think he's going to be incredibly hard to beat. So, yeah, nothing too interesting. Just 100 on the schnauzer for me. No, I can't. I can't give a spruik like that and not include him. So, 90 bucks on Kovalika and then I'll have a $10 Quinella between the two. Yeah, lovely. Kovalika and Fame. Bit of juice. Yeah, why not? Um, I have literally have nothing to lose. <laughs> <laughs> Race 8 is the Kingsford Smith Cup. So, it's 1,300 metre group one. Interesting race, this one. There's a lot of horses that I have a lot of time for in this race. Mm. Eduardo has drawn perfectly out of barrier four, uh, four or five. Rothfire's outside him and Emerald Kingdom will probably kick up underneath him. And then you have big boy Gentleman Roy out wide who he knows no other way. He'll be going forward in this race. 100%. I think Polisipan will be right behind him. Um, yeah, there's a stack of speed in this race. Loads of pressure up front. I think they're going to be going quick. Mate, this is a cracking race. Yeah, it's a fantastic addition. Like, I think, um, sure, not all of these are Group 1 horses, right? But no. I feel like it's still worthy of the tag. Yes. Because it is so competitive across the board. Yes. And it is an important race for a lot of horses here. The likes of Valana, um, com- uh, not necessarily Converge anymore, but... Uh, yeah, Paul Laley as well. Like to get another weight for age Group One win on their CV, huge, huge, huge amount money. at stake. A case of you as well. The the import whilst it's done it overseas, they want to prove it over here. Um, so yeah, a huge race for a lot of horses, and yeah, I think it's stacked with chances. Um, think it, think about it. Uh, is your favourite? He's five dollars with the good people. At Ned's, so you've got five dollars the field. There's a few in that sort of single digits, um, sort of space, uh, and the rest are you know bigger odds than that. Think about it. He's he's done he's done what Giga Kick to start off his what Giga Kick did to start off his career. He it's like who is he beaten? Yeah, but but he just keeps winning, and then he's added a couple of sort of black type wins post that. Um, so I remember before the Everest, we were talking about. Like, Giga kick, yeah, he can't win this. Despite the fact that he hadn't been beaten yet. Mm. Um, and then he comes out and, yeah, ran a terrific race and, and, and beats a hot field in the Everest. So, but where the horse that is effectively unbeaten, he's seven from eight, um, think about it, um, hasn't lost for a while. Um, but $5 with Ned's, it's an okay price, but I'm, I'm probably looking around him. Um, I'd like to see it yep. here. This is an acid test. Look, if he comes out and wins, like, okay, cool. That's awesome. And I'm still happy because we've got another good sprinting horse to add mm-hmm. to our ranks. Uh, but I'm looking around him. Um, did you give him a closer look? I gave him an enormous look mm. uh, because I I had a look at this race, but I also had a look uh, at where he sits in the Stradbroke. And he's actually not sit- sitting that mm. well. No. So he probably actually needs to run pretty well here to guarantee a start but he's also weighted pretty poorly in that race yeah he's um probably going to start with i think he's got about uh he's 32nd in entry and he's got 54 kilos at the moment Mm. he's actually not suited that well in that race so this could actually be the grand final here um if he'll probably get a start in the strap broke there and maybe start with 55 kilos yeah he's 55 kilos with something down in the weights like say if she gets in the field as well, like at Opal Ridge, is that really gonna be get the job done? And like the likes of um, Af Cabin as well, with like fifty two. Gee, that's a that's a tough ask. Um, I think he is right in the game here. Mm. Barrier eight on the surface looks sticky, but three of them on the inside of him have drawn uh, the speed in the race, and then you've got the likes of the. Um, not the Inferno. You have a couple of back markers inside him as well. Shayu, the Inferno, um, a case of you uh, are all around him in the running, yeah. And then you've got King of Sparta will go back. Yeah, exactly. So I think he'll actually get a really, really nice run. Uh, I could see him two back, maybe three back, one off the fence in that, in that maybe third 
just that wave that comes in. I think he'll blend into the race beautifully. I think he's right in the game. Yes, your point about who he's beaten is extremely valid, but his, yeah. his two runs against the mo- uh, his hardest company to date are his most impressive wins. Yeah. So what what's saying that he can't do it again? Exactly, which which was why I sort of linked him to kick a kick because beware the beware the unbeaten horse with a horse like think about it. Um, there's just so many so you think so I get confused like think it over, <laughs> think about it. Like it's just gee whiz, um, yeah. I, I think he's definitely in with a shout, but I'm just I'm just going against him because there's some more proven performers here at Wait for Age. Yep. Um, and there's a, a few others that are in the market, um, the likes of King of Sparta, the likes of Rothfire. I know you're a King of Sparta fan. What are your thoughts on his chances? Well, I think there's two winning chances in the race, and he's one of them. Um, I knew so, it. <laughs> I think um, I think this horse is a fourteen hundred meter horse. Now he has won four times at the twelve hundred meters, but I think his best distance is around this thirteen hundred to fourteen hundred meter distance. He's he just finds a couple a bit too sharp at that twelve hundred, um, especially at this level. This is cherry ripe for him. Um, I don't think he's been in better career form mm. uh, than. Them right now. Uh, Barrier two is going to be difficult, but hopefully uh, Chad can get him a little Chad. bit closer in the run. Uh, but Chad's never never missed in the Quinella when riding him. So, um, oh, there you go. And his last run of out of that victory stakes, Prince of Boom has franked the form. Um, and uh, or was it Golden Boom last week? Uh, it was Golden Boom, yeah. Uh, Oh, see, you're getting confused about the thing about us. So I'm getting, booms. I'm getting confused about the booms, but I think of those first four, which included Paul Laley as well. I think King of Sparta is the one that I want to take into this race. Yeah, it was a huge run, huge run. So fair enough. Um, yeah, other ones in the market, Rothfire. He won last start. Um, super tough horse, like. You know, he ran super in this race last year up on speed and um, he'll be there or thereabouts again. Risking him, a case of you, draws a gate. So for the first time since being in Australia, we'll sit a bit closer, you would imagine, but I'm happy to risk as well. So it pretty much just like rules out um, a lot of the horses in the market. King of Spider, yeah, agree with you, but happy to risk. He's not one of mine. So I'm looking at juice. And when you're looking at juice, they're going to be big prices. And the two Godolphin things, for me, like I'm not letting him go around without some of mine. So first we'll touch on Valana. Yeah, he was disappointing last start. Um, after a four-week break, after braining him um, down in Randwick, I just don't think that 1,200-metre sort of high-pressure race sort of suited him. I think he's a 1,300, 1,400-metre horse and... There's definitely some intent around him. He's still got his nuts. Um, and I think he'll sit probably just off the speed. I think he'll sit about midfield of Alana. So at 11 bucks with Neds, he's going to be in my strategy. Um, talk about Paul Laley. So, yes, it's a bit of a meme that I love this horse, right? It's a bit of a meme. And sometimes he can put up an absolute stinker, Paul Laley. <laughs> but sometimes he can put in a tremendous run. And I think back to some of his best runs, most recently the winner bottom, it's when he drew the widest gate and Benny Mellum had no choice but to take him all the way back. He's drawn the widest gate here effectively after emergency. He's like, like standard. <laughs> but, but Benny Mellum will pretty much have, <coughs> excuse me, will pretty much have no choice but to send him to the back, ride him cold. Last start, he was sort of up close to the speed. And I just think when he's ridden there, he uses a bit too much energy to stay with him. And I think it actually dampens his brilliance at the end of a sprint. If he's ridden cold and if there's a stack of pressure up early in this race, like I think there will be, I think with the Eagle Farm track, the dry deck, loads of pressure, rails true, he'll come around the outside and start screaming home like a freight train. I think he'll need every single inch of that 1,300 metres to get over the top of him. So Paul Ailey's my on toppy. Bit of a meme, but also like genuine about it. Uh, he's 12 bucks with Neds. The other two I'm going to have a little spec on so I'm betting on four horses in this race even though I said to you last week I was like I'm just going to put a hundred bucks on the trolls <laughs> now. Um, there's two 
Uh, Alpine Edge. So Alpine Edge won the Archer at big price last start, and he just couldn't get out for so long. And when he finally did, he just absolutely rocketed to the line. Drawn sticky, barrier 17. So um, I think he actually... Yeah, so he's drawn outside place. He's not the, in the widest gate. But um, he'll have to go back too. And I think if there's a horse at big odds that's coming home like a freight train, it's going to be Alpine Edge. He actually still has his nuts, so there's probably some intent here too. And he's 51 bucks of a net, so I'll have a little throw at the stumps. And the last one... Um, is a mare with her second start for the O'Day and Hoisted stable, and that's Shayu. Um, she's a bomb fresh. I think she's five from seven fresh. Um, first run with the stable was in the listed Sunshine Coast Cup, um, fourteen hundred meters right up her alley. She just stalked him and went absolutely bang, and she raided through the roof in that race. So kept on ice for this again. Wants a race with a stack of pressure. Wants a race with a dry deck, uh, plenty of room. Um, on Eagle Farm, she's 20 bucks with Ned. So I'm having a bit of a spec. I'm 40 Valana, 40 Paul Ailey, 10 Up on Edge, 10 Shayu. It's well played by you. Just just reading this race like a book, watch none of my things finish in the top four. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your point about Valana is very well found. So you might even come race day you might even get double the price for him mm. than compared to a horse like a case of you he was a length behind that horse yeah and a case of you was unlucky had to dodge and weave but Volana lost a plate in the run yeah so there was there was excuses there and he actually stuck on okay so i think he's in the he's definitely he's probably my next best yep. after that um i'm just keeping it somewhat simple uh <laughs> 50 bucks King of Sparta and 50 bucks Think About It. They're, they're the price where you can do that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And uh, I think, think I'm, a, I'm, I'm starting to be a believer about this horse, Think About It. So mm. I think he might be my on top selection. Okay, there's a bit to get through. Let's go to race three, the Premier's Cup, 2400 meters group three. Now, a friend of ours <laughs> said that Serpentine's the best bet in Brisbane a few weeks ago and he was right. That's his first win for a very long time, wasn't it? <laughs> it was. Uh, and he knocked off the very short-priced favourite, Calipor, who came out and won arrogantly next start um, in the chairman's handicap, which was a couple of weeks ago by the time that this race comes to fruition. Mm. Um, are you sticking with Serpentine? Yeah, because he's the obvious leader, and I think he can just do the exact same thing. I think he can just sit up the front and just slow down the pace and just put them away. Um, yeah, it'd be, it'd be hilarious. He doesn't win for like 10 years and wins two on the on the trot. But yeah, Serpentine for me. Yeah. I didn't mind the look of Kukaracha. Mm, um, yeah. So Kukaracha was... He snuck up on the rail in the Wa- uh, Wagga Cup. Um, and I don't know if you saw in that race, but Lions Roar is back in other news. Lions Roar is officially back. He is officially back. Um 2,000 metres there. You look at his his prep, this looks almost like a target race for him. Mm. So first up in a Doncaster prelude, he was beaten six lengths. Improved to only getting beaten three and a half. Next start over the mile. Stats up to the 2,000 metres, gets beaten half a length. I think he's cherry ripe here to run a very nice race over the 2,400. Waller, J-Mac, you know what it is. Bang, bang. I would just. I was hoping for more than four dollars eighty for people at Ned. So <laughs> it um, is what it is. Now the Lord's Mayor Cup. So this is the race that Big Boy Roy won a year ago. <laughs> he raced um, super well last start. He did. <laughs> Not as well the character though. No. Look at the price they've put up for him. No. Yeah. I, yeah. Unbelievable. Um, look, I've got to. Like, I've got to. I've, tr- I've got to try and find some money from him, even though I should have last start. So. Yeah, character for me. I'm not pay- playing in a big way in this race. Um, big boy Roy's in with a shout. Um, new mandate. I think he can forgive the Hollandale run um, based on his Hawkesbury Cup form. Yeah, I think I think he's in with a shout too. So yeah, not not in a big way, but I'll, I'll have to back character. Yeah, <laughs> I'd be sho- I'd be shocked. Yeah, I'd have to. Mate, he started thirteen dollars against sixteen dollars. They, they don't learn the bookies, do they? <laughs> the good people at Neds. Uh, so. I thought there was, yeah, the two that I would be playing around in this race is new mandate, as you mentioned. Um, absolutely spanked character in that Hawkesbury Cup. And uh, he's $5.50 here, as you said. Hollandale's a forgive. 
Big Boy Roy is the other one. He was sensational. I think this is his track. This is his distance. <laughs> he just needs the Brisbane winter sun on his back, Big Boy Roy. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm seeing that Nash is on first time. One of the great gear If I had glasses on, I'd be taking them off. <laughs> Excuse me? Yeah, Nash. Not Nash. No, that's a jockey change. Yeah, first time. So I think Big Boy can get the job done for me. Because I was heartbroken last start, not as heartbroken as you. Fred Best <laughs> uh, for the three-year-olds, 1,400 metres, group three. Now, you have Yellow Brick versus Hawaii Five O, but I don't think the chances stop there. Yeah, cracking race. It always is the Fred Best. Um, when you're in to the Stradbroke, and there's some handy horses here. Uh, look, I, I found Hawaii Five O last start, which is why I'm sort of leaning to him over Yellow Brick, but I really like both the horses. Mm. Yellow Brick's got the better story um, out of the Sears stable in T-Bar on my passport. Um, and, and he could be anything. Like his his last start win was tough. Very tough. Tough win. Um, and you've got to be a good horse to do that. And 1,200 metres isn't suited for him. He's, he's looking for further. So um, Yellow Brick um, would be more than happy for him to win, but my money's going to be on Hawaii Five O. There's a bit of brilliance about this cult. The way he accelerated um, last start in the Hawkesbury Guineas. He's staying at the distance, um, but I think he could have won that by further. Um, Nashi sort of sta- um, uh, pulled the reins with about 7,500 metres to go, and he stays on here, hot Nash. So, yeah, Hawaii 5 on top. He spanked him last start, didn't he? He did. Yeah. Um, look, I'm, I'm probably going to fall victim to the classic – Back marker flashing light here, but I see the price of twenty seven dollars for Soothsayer, and I'm I'm dumbfounded by that price because <laughs> that was one of the great runs mm. of flashing light runs that you'd ever hope to see in the Gold Coast Guineas that was run on the Sunshine Coast. Uh, that yellow brick was three wide, no cover, doing it the tough way. Obviously, the horse to take out of it, but two dollars seventy in a pretty competitive field. Leave me out of that. Um, Happy for him to win, but I'd much rather have a smaller yeah. bet at the $27 on offer for Soothsayer, <sighs> who's got a pretty good resume to date. Last 300 meters had to come outside, so had to shift heels, probably lo- lost a couple of lengths there, and absolutely savaged the line late. Yeah. Um, you know, Eagle Farm is probably similar to Sunshine Coast. In it's a beautiful of, track, Sunshine is Coast, isn't it? Sensational stuff. Great track. Can't wait to have a winner there one day. <laughs> but yeah, it's Soothsayer. A matter, of, matter of time. Matter of time. Soothsayer on top for me. Um, yeah, give it strength at $27. Now, the size produce for the two-year-olds. I said this to you pretty much every week, that these two-year-olds are getting tougher and tougher to follow. Have you nailed one down here? They are. So I'm looking for one who's coming left of field and he's wearing a pair of familiar silks um, from Team Rogerson. And that's Solidify, number nine, um, from New Zealand. So by the same sire as Sharp and Smart, uh, word out of the Rogerson stable is that this guy's Sharp and Smart 2.0. Okay. So um, you're getting $5 at the moment with Ned's. Um should have checked, but I don't know what price he is at Futures um, for the JJ, but if this thing is sharp and smart 2.0, whatever price you're getting now for the JJ is, is going to be bigger than what you get on the day. I'll tell you that much for free. So, um, yeah, respect to the likes of Armed Forces and um, and the likes of um, Chris Aor, Chris Aor, Chris Aor. Uh, it was great last start, um, uh, beating Namesake, who beat... Um, Methuselah, who's also a, a, a horse that the Swallow Stable has a lot of time for. Uh, but no, number nine, solidify for me. Mate, the toppy, Sofrado, uh, for me, that was a tough win. Mm, yeah, it uh, was. Poked through the middle of Appen Girl and Armed Forces, who I think Armed Forces had the peachiest run of all time. Um, Step of 1,400 metres probably does suit both of these horses. So, mm. Sofrado for me, I think $8 is a bit of a big price considering yeah. that win last start and it's because he started $26 that day. Fair. Um, danger for me is um, the little filly on the quick backup and that's um, number 15, Zia. Mm. Um, 
out of the Waterhouse and Bot stable. She's definitely showing some ability and she'll be up there on pace. So um, I think she's – is she the favourite or is Kwasi or – about the same no. price. So Yeah. 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 Um, the other one, there is another one that I think could potentially be a JJ horse as well and that is number 11, Snapback. Um, was a $3-ish favourite at Gosford. Just never never really got going. Uh, mm. Just kind of was going up and down one spot. Really keen to see how he responds to being in the Queensland sun and stepping out to 1,400 metres. It's just might, different, isn't it? Might be exactly what he needs. Let's finish things off here with the Helen Coughlin Stakes. Again, the last race on the program. Queensland, showing the way. This needs to be the norm everywhere, I think. Absolutely. And... I don't actually think you need 10 races on a card. No. Absolutely not. Um, I found this extremely difficult. It is. Um, I'm hoping it's an absolute fill-up for Godolphin on Saturday. <laughs> um, I was on Hellfest last start uh, and she ran a really respectable 8th of 13. <laughs> um, but she was sort of back in midfield. I think she was about last in the running and she and she did run on, um, but you just can't do that. Um at Doombin, but yeah, look, her, her record's too good for her not to bounce back. So um, she was first up after a pretty significant break there. Um, so yeah, number five, Hellfest with, with the good people at Ned's 19 bucks. Nah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Fucking hell. We were looking, we were talking to, with our good mates at Ned's today, which you'll probably see across your social feeds in over the next, I don't know, however many weeks. When when do you want to take on a favourite? Mm. Number eight, Brooks, Brooks Buyer is a favourite that I want to take on. Oh, 100%. There, there was no way in hell I was ever going to back Brooks Buyer in this no. race. Um, because she's she's lightly raced over the last 12 months. Her good track form is abysmal mm. for looking at, especially consider Eagle Farm's different gravy drifters. It is it is nearly the hardest track in Australia when, it's a, when it's a good track. Um, like last year, they moved the Doombin 10,000 to that track because it was bloody a heavy 20 at Doombin and it landed up being a soft five <laughs> was, by the time the race came It was around. like misty, it was, misty rain and it was a soft five. It was unbelievable. So it's got incredible drainage. So they're going to, and it's been lovely, just absolute crisp summer, uh, summery, Feel of days in, uh, during the center, uh, middle of the day here in winter in Brisbane. It's perfect um, weather to go to the track, like because you can wear your jacket and you're not hot. No, um, but it's also not cold. Mm. It's perfect. It's just it's, right. It's like Goldilocks zone. It's, it's the Goldilocks zone of weather. Mm. Um, but she's one from seven on good tracks. I think it's going to be even harder than that. So, yeah, she, I can put a line straight through her. The mayor who I think is in sensational form is number 10, Extremist. Um, form around Antino, who is looking to get a run in the Kingsford Smith Cup. Um, she just doesn't know how to run a bad race. I think she is right in the game here, but my confidence is not sky high. <laughs> Fair enough. That's all she wrote. That's it. That's it. We're just sticking in Brisbane for the rest of this season. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm over Southern racing. I'm yeah. over it. Uh, and why not? The, the cards, the card in at Eagle Farm this weekend is fantastic, mate. I saw some footage from James Cummings himself, and he's like, "It's full credit to the Brisbane Racing Club because they're putting on some very competitive races this year. They're some, you know, some good horses have hung around, and he's bloody right." He's right. It's it's the, the right amount of prize money to sort of lure, like you know, not not necessarily like like you're not going to have your animos right. Um, but we did get Giga Kick, and you're not going to lure like the consistent Group One top liners to Queensland, but you're going to get Group One horses. Absolutely. So the, so the quality of the races is always going to be top notch. And I tell you what, you've got Sydney and Melbourne up here. I'd say Sydney's on top. Melbourne's a very close second. You've got a bit of a gap, but sitting very nicely in third on the podium. Yep. Bronze medal around their neck, just being like, yeah, look, we're happy to be here. Is Queensland. <laughs> um, 
And then it's a bit of a gap to WA, I'd say. And then mm. that's pretty much the only racing jurisdictions we have. Tasmania. Tas- Tassie, Darwin's yeah. under that. Yeah. Uh, I think um, Ipswich Cup Day is under that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, there you go. So that's a, that's the um, that's the final field for racing jurisdictions in Australia. Mm. Yeah, so I can't wait to hopefully get out there on Saturday. Um, yes, potentially at the track on Saturday, yeah. drifters. So if you're heading there um, and you see our big noggins, particularly mine, mm. massive, say good day. Mm. Yes, do do that. What I will say bit of a different way to finish this um go get your skin check drifters go go to the doctor have oh, a skin check yeah i forgot to ask you yeah i went this afternoon all all is fine he yep. said don't come back in two or three years which i thought was casual <laughs> <laughs> two or three years <laughs> in this in this harsh queensland sun yeah that is very uh very casual i just have good mediterranean genes did they check that I weird one on your scrot <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> good because that one yeah. is weird it was just a piece of chalky <laughs> Finesse since Easter. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, go do that, Drifters, uh, because I know like my partner included uh, hasn't been to get their skin checked in a while and I think I was talking a bit to you about it as well. So do a bit of self-care and go get your skin checked and maybe even general check out with your doc. Why not? Yeah. Good shit. <laughs> All right. Goodbye. See you, Drifters.